But if you're coming at it the right way, it's more complex than it is rich bitch. Right, it is another flashback episode of Let There Be Talk. It is uh, number five of the flashback series. Make sure you subscribe and leave some comments on the YouTube channel, my friends. And welcome here today. Thank you. It is part two of my John Mayer interview that happened way back in 2019. Like I said before, I absolutely love this episode and it was an honor to have him on. And I, I hope that you enjoy part two. It is just, you know, I had to split it up back when I recorded it. I had no idea when he came over that he was gonna sit down for like two, three, four hours. So I split it up when I originally recorded it. You know, people got crazy ADD, so they're into something for like 20 minutes and then they, uh oh, what's that over there? And then they forget what they're doing. So I thought, well, I'll split it up and uh, let people take it in on their own leisure time. Anyway, I'm off to St. Louis tomorrow. St. Louis, two shows at the Fabulous Fox with Bill Burr. And then I will be in Springfield, Missouri with Bill Burr. And then New York City, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at the stand and the comedy seller so hope to see you guys out there also uh acme has been rescheduled july 24th through the 27th i believe so acme is back and uh i'm looking forward to going back to minneapolis again also uh comedy seller in las vegas at the rio july 8th through the i don't know 14 or 17 or something a whole week there DeanDelRay.com is where you get all of your ticket info. Looking forward to seeing you guys out there. Lots of tour dates up July 8th, the Greek Theater in Berkeley. That's going to be insane. Belco Arena is happening in Denver in June. All right, let's get into it. The Great John Mayer, part two of uh, one of my favorite episodes of all time on Let There Be Talk. Thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Candles are lit. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is Monday, November 11th. Welcome, welcome aboard. Welcome back. Welcome newcomers, whoever you are out there. Hello, and thank you for tuning in. The guest today is part two, of course, of the great John Mayer. Episode number 502, and I got to first say right away, thank you to everyone that has emailed me and Instagrammed me, slid into my DMs, as the kids would say, or uh, hit me on Twitter or Facebook, wherever the fuck you hit me up, I want to say thank you. This episode uh, has really seemed to taken on a, a life of its own. It's really crossed over. I knew it would uh, to all different people. We got the uh, Dell Razors, the original Let There Be Talk fans. We have Deadheads coming on board. We have Guitar Freaks coming on. And then we have the great John Mayer fans uh, all here. It's a it's a cross-pollination, a superstorm, and as, uh, as cheesy as that sounds, that's, uh, that's what has happened. I don't, I don't even know why I said as cheesy as that sounds, because uh, there's nothing cheesy about it. It, it, is, uh, it touched me. It, it definitely, I got to be honest, as I did the episode and uh, I sat there, I was like, yeah, maybe this is it. Maybe I've, I've, I've ran the course of the podcast. It's like, uh, you know, I recorded a record years ago, a music record. And uh, I knew, I was like, this is a great record uh, for me. I felt good about it. I still feel good about it. That's why I haven't uh, done a comedy record yet. I want it to be great. And to uh, do something great is all, all anybody, I think, really wants to do. 
Or yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, but what I'm saying is I recognized the importance of this podcast episode to me. As I was doing it, I was like, this is, this is really it. I, I had worked on it for eight years, and look where it's at right now. And how could it get better than this? And you have to, as an artist, I think, sit and think back. Do you just walk away and go, okay, I hit the high water mark? Or uh, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here tooting my horn. I'm just saying, for me, I was like, wow, this is, this is fucking cool. Do you walk away and go, yeah, there it was. I did 502 episodes. Uh, it was great ride, eight years. Maybe try something else. Or do you accept, hey, man, this is my, my uh, born to run, my exile, and I keep working. <laughs> That sounds like all a bunch of bullshit calling the podcast. This is my exile. But you, you know what the fuck I'm saying. It's just you sit back and you think, wow, everybody's going to be. It doesn't matter what I drop next week. They'll be like, oh, all right, yeah. You know, but anyway, I don't know. Those are the mixed up things that go on in your head as you uh, you keep going. There's all these uh, these these big these big fucking landmines you got to watch out for. These things that try to get you to quit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just doubts in your mind. Do I keep doing the podcast? Do I just do comedy? Do I try to find... I don't know. I just wake up each day, enjoy life, and uh, say, fuck it, man. It's way better than it was eight years ago. Let's keep going. And that's what, uh, that's what we're here doing today with the great John Mayer part two. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as you did part one. Uh, it was uh, a perfect spot to cut off right there at the Bruce Springsteen rap. And uh, today we pick up right there where we left off. And uh, I just want to thank you guys again. Do not forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on iTunes. That very, very much helps the, uh, the uh, flow of the show. People finding it, all that stuff. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying right now because I just tried to do this intro stepping off a plane from Omaha in Detroit. I was out there with the great Joey Diaz. We did Detroit on Thursday. We did Omaha Friday, Saturday. Never been to Omaha I've been all around America. I've rode my motorcycle everywhere. I've, I've burned through Kansas and all that area. And I'm sure I might have been to Omaha. I just don't remember it. I barely remember what I did last year. <laughs> but uh, fantastic run of shows. And uh, thank you, everybody that came out. And thank you, Joey Diaz, for having me on. And we, we ran into the great Andy Kindler on our 5 a.m. flight this morning. And it was awesome to see him. There's nothing better than when a couple comics run into another comic at the airport or on your flight. It's so fucking... I can't even describe the family feel that it is. It's like, there's another soldier there's another soldier in the comedy battle. And uh, Andy Kindler will be here in a couple weeks. If I keep doing the podcast. <laughs> anyway, it was great to see Andy. And it was great to see all of you guys. I want to do a quick shout out right now to the brand new Patreoners. If you want to hear uh, bonus episodes of Let There Be Talk, they're on patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Brand new uh, Patreoners, Brian Spink, Scott Kirvel, Russell Milder, and Adam. Just straight Adam. That's, that's fucking, that's balls out, dude. You go by one name like Prince or uh, Bono or uh, who else goes by one name. Anyway, thank you guys for your new, uh, new Patreon support. Upcoming shows. I am going to be next week at the Terrapin Crossroads in Marin County. The first comedy show ever at Phil Lesh's Club. I'm doing it. Terrapin, November 21st. Marin County, San Francisco, Sonoma County. 
Get in your cars and get to this gig. Let's have some fun. Let's pack it out. Show them that comedy will work in Terrapin. November 21st. Tickets available on my website, deandelray.com. December 12th, we're doing a little Toys for Tots run at the La Jolla Comedy Store. Come to that. I'll be headlining that. December 21st, I'm in Vegas with the great Bill Burr at the Cosmopolitan. 27th and 28th, Caluso in Sacramento and Palace of Fine Arts with Joey Diaz. And January 4th, I'm headlining in Fresno. And then back to the Las Vegas Comedy Cellar, January 13th through the 19th. Those are the shows. You know what to do. Get tickets. Come out. Support live comedy. And by the way, I'm still, I think I'm on the 15th day of listening to John Mayer's record, Born and Raised. Like a fucking lunatic, I listen to it every day, all day. Here we go. Here he is. John Mayer, part two. Thank you, guys. Keep the candles lit. But you know the person who's kicking my ass the most right now is Springsteen. Oh, not now. Now you're going to talk. Let's get into this a little bit because here's what's going on with me. I grew up, I hated Pink Floyd, Grateful Dead, and Springsteen. Couldn't stand them. Bruce, you know, I first saw him on uh, the Dumb Records, Lucky Town, and the other one, I was like, ah, I'm out uh-huh. of here, this is terrible. Uh-huh. And then I saw Ghost of Tom Joad tour, and that was it for me. Good for and you. I've been hooked so hard. And then the play on, on Broadway. I was bawling. I was crying. I was bawling. I was almost convulsing crying so hard. Yeah. And I was with my tour manager, and we were sitting, watching the show, and Bruce begins to talk about the road, you know, in this beautiful way, you know, when the line of road divides the road and you da, 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 and I start kind of getting choked up and I hear my tour manager's getting choked up and I'm like, oh, this is because we do this thing. We happen to be uh, getting upset at this. Yeah. And then I start realizing, oh, everybody's crying here. Oh, yeah. You start hearing the sound of people who swear they're not crying. <coughs> oh, yeah. 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 That ain't me. That ain't me. <laughs> Some in my eye. <coughs> this, this old theater's dusty. And then when I, <laughs> then when I realized yeah. that this was what was going to happen and it was expected, I felt slightly violated oh. because I was not prepared. I did not bring my armor for this. And he spent the next two hours destroying me basically taking all 206 bones out of your body stacking them up in front of you inventorying them and then putting them back in and go and have a nice night i I never seen a guy like this never seen anything like it it was a metaphysical i don't even think a netflix special can can i don't think you can show anybody the netflix special. I, i didn't think i wish he never filmed that it's it, it's impossible to film it. Yeah, it yeah, it's like they, trying to take a picture of the moon on your iPhone. Yeah, they, it's they, like, what are you going to do with this? People are like, did you watch that? And I go, no, I refuse to watch it because um, to see it live was so moving and insane me. that I don't want to fuck with that memory ever. Are you where, where are you from? Are you from the East Coast, San Francisco? Oh, okay. So and it still fucked you up. Oh. See, if you're from the East Coast, yeah, in the anywhere in the last fifty years, right? You smell the sky. He's talking about. Oh, I know. Even if and I didn't grow up in New Jersey. I grew I grew up in Fairfield, Connecticut. Same Drake's cakes, same Entenmann's, yeah. same New York Mets, 1986 World Series, the same papers, same things, yeah. you know. And same crispy autumn air, same relationship with the seasons, same relationship with the world. And he was, he basically was like Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney and you get in the boat and he takes you through your life. He takes you through. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. And then I went back and met him, which I didn't want to do because I was so upset. And I, yeah. did, and I knew that he was going to get a part of me that uh, wasn't so careful with making sure I didn't bother somebody about right. how great they were right right i normally like to kind of contain myself no 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 come on man come on down come on down and i realized something that night <laughs> it took me a long time to realize longer than most people bruce springsteen knows how good he is and oh, doesn't oh. need john mayer yeah to formulate uh, an interesting abstract way to say it so he could go oh shit really yeah yeah right uh and that what i had tried to do 
was what every other person whom he's touched has tried to do, which is try to get the man that good to know how good he is, which is like pissing in the wind. Absolutely. It's just like, but I had to try. He, 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 I mean, you know, when you hear like meeting across the river, mm-hmm. it's just like, what? Uh, look, may, maybe life has to happen in a certain order and music has to happen to you in a certain order. I believe that. Because I'll send young artists... Uh, I shall be released, and they don't get it. And I can't understand how a writer, any writer of any age couldn't understand I shall That's be released. That's what I love about music, though. I love it. It's, it, it slowly keeps unraveling through my life. If it didn't do that, can you imagine no, being at 53 and I being know. like, oh, I'm done with I music. I did that. There's, uh, Every I, year, theoretically, gets better to be a young person discovering music because there's more to catch up to. Right. And only the good stuff is going to come out. Yeah. You know? For me, Bruce, it took a minute. But I had to go through Bob Dylan and Neil Young to right. understand the flavor of that stuff. Well, I was always a Neil Young guy, but I wasn't a, a, a Bruce guy, yeah, which was weird. It's, but, but for me, my point of entry, I, mean, I started hearing things I really liked. I loved My City of Ruins. I loved that. Oh, movie. my God. It, it, there's a tear, there's played... a tear on your pillow, darling, where you oh. slept, and you took my heart when you left. Oh. And it's, and it's sung, and you took my heart when you left. It's oh. unbelievable. How about when he just comes out, there's a blood red circle. It's in unbelievable. In a cold blood scourge. I have chills going up the back of my oh, head. Oh, I and saw him play that on that benefit. It was the, uh, it was the, uh, the telethon the, Yeah, thing. the 9-11 telethon. Yeah, and then you're watching He's it. He's doing you, Rise Up. And you're like, what is this song? It's unbelievable. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. And so then I discover, well, for me, what really knocked me out was uh, Tunnel of Love. Oh, yeah. Because whenever a record sounds like records I know, yeah. I find it very helpful. Like, I turn people on to... Uh, dead and, like Grateful Dead Spring 77 because they're the Betty Boards and they sound like records people know right right if you can right. overcome that chasm then you you people have a better chance of li- you can't just give people like uh, uh, you know yeah April 69 and go have fun oh, 69 you know what just I mean? kind of like that's uh-huh. a show off that's a show off for the deadhead it, trying it, to turn on another yeah day. yeah 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 like, right? no, no, no 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 man yeah. here, here's, here you go dive into this yeah yeah here's, I always play it say if I go like uh, you know Mid seventies, or, or even seventy two. Right, just, just yeah. take take the Europe seventy two stuff, which is, yeah. I think it's tinkered with. Yeah, right? like yeah, I think so. It's tinkered with. It's I like the so. way they did in the seventies. They bring it back in and they right. Tinkered I with think it so. But um, so I started discovering stuff, and then it was like Tunnel of Love, and then I heard like on that record, there's Brilliant Disguise, there's uh, Tougher Than the Rest. Yeah. There's all these great songs on there. Two, you played Bruce on this last tour. I just played Tougher Than the Rest on my birthday yeah. just as a birthday present to myself. So great. And then I heard Nebraska. And that messed me up. That just messed me up. Yeah. And then like one of my favorite things I've ever heard is Growing Up. Oh. Have you heard the acoustic demo of Growing oh, Up? Oh my God. Do you realize Dude. it's a two word chorus and it'll knock you across the room. It's so great. How about when he plays it in the play? It's, um, it's, it, that's oh. what made me sob. Oh, same. Have you ever like, heard someone of... sing a word or a phrase yeah. in a way that embodied the very experience of that phrase? Yeah. He sings growing up with all of the bitter sweetness of growing up. I, I, I absolutely love I'm upset. I got all the bootlegs. <sighs> There's a there's a bootleg called Trust Your Car with the Man with the Star and it's at the bottom line. And it was something I played for probably a year. And then I got the Fillmore seventy eight, I think, or seven, and then the Roxy on the uh board. Oh you go deep. I, I I I hope to go that deep. Somewhere. Oh yeah. When you get into it's really crazy when you get into that mid seventies Bruce, the muscle they had, but mm-hmm. it didn't sound like you know, it wasn't like metal or anything, right. but you're like, how is this so, so strong? Yeah. Uh, and then, I, you know, of course, I love like Youngstown and Stefan Goes to Tom Jode. I think that's like my third favorite record. See, I, I have to listen to it. Oh. Uh, part, of, part of me being a curious dude is not uh, acting like I know everything. And I have to go listen to that. That's great. Though. I have to check it out because I'm on that Lindrum sit at home write music with your with your like Yamaha DX7 and a Lindrum thing. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. just breaks my heart that I can't. I mean, I like having my heart broken by people who are just 10 times better than me and 
make me feel like nothing. I like that makes me rare. I like feeling like nothing in that way. I like hearing a song and going, "I'm a giant piece of garbage for, for not being able to do that." <laughs> I'm like that with comedy. Oh I yeah, I just yeah, watch yeah. comics. Yeah. You know, I tour with Burr. Yeah, I tour with Marin. I've opened for Chappelle. And yeah, I'm not over here tooting my horn, but no, it immediately great. just lets you know right away. Like, oh yeah, I'm That's just so good. It, but I, do you like that feeling? I, I do like it. I really I, like I it. I don't like it. But I do like it because exactly. it makes me want to work. Exactly. And I think that if it came easy, I yep. would have been bored and tapped out. Yep. Oh, I wish I could someday sit down and write a thing that feels so good is tougher than the rest. Oh. I mean, these are, if you think about it on a songwriting level, a lot of Bruce songs are verse refrains, which means, for those listening, I know you know, like, it's not like here's a verse and now here's a chorus. It's a verse that takes you around and around and drops you on the last line of the verse. Oh, that's right. And that's a lot of his way of writing. Do you know how good you have to be for the last line to take all of the power that was assembling, that was, that was, that was crescendoing, and drop it on your head and have it work? Yeah. It is so hard to write eight lines and have the last line go, oh my God, every one of those lines was worth it. And he multiplied the power of each line by 100 and he came down. Tougher He's the than best. The Tougher than the rest. He's that's the how he resolves it. It's very hard stuff. It's easier to be abstract, and you see that a lot now. Like He's so good that I ignore his guitar tone. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and, I, and I would never say anything bad about Bruce, right. but I've never understood his guitar tone. Yeah, and it's the, the, the only thing I don't understand about The Takamini thing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But even then, you could say his oh. loyalty to Takamini oh. is so strong yeah, yeah. that he won't play another guitar. Because you got to imagine that Springsteen playing an old D28. Oh, shit. Can you imagine? Knock you on your ass. It's almost like he went like, nah, that's Neil's thing. I'm not playing Maybe. a G. I'm not playing and a you know, But knowing Bruce, he likes a guy at Takamini yeah. who's been there the whole it's time. It's blue collar. And he goes, I just I just call Gary. Yeah, 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 right? And I can't disappoint. And, th and then you'd be like, oh, that's why that guitar sounds good to me. Because it's about, because he, he would never let Gary down. Yeah. You know? I, I wanted one of your that. stagecoach guitars big time. That I guitar was actually inspired by a scene of Dylan playing at a protest. Maybe well, I, he was playing Medgar Evers Blues or something. I'm so into the Joan Baez one. And then Martin in the 90s put out like 50 of them. Do you know there was a sticker under that guitar? That yeah. Was put that's, under, the, yeah. under the top? It's on the reissue it also. The yeah. yeah. I tried to buy one of the uh, Joan Baez ones right when they came out. Sold out in a minute. Still have never been able to get one. There's only like 50. But isn't it fun to Google? To oh. look uh, every oh, oh, like I'm every Sunday night, I'll be like, "What's on my to look list?" Yeah. I have a I have a look list that is a mile long. And what's I on it? A, Give me some love. a certain brand of vintage glasses on eBay. What are you looking for? I'm looking for basically. I don't want to. I can't. Oh yeah, any, yeah. I, get I can't it. give anybody my my search term. Yeah. Right. I get it. Vintage sunglasses, and they come up every once in a while. And I'm like, oh, these are great. Mm -hmm. Um. Sometimes I look at eBay to see what the market's doing with watches. Right. You ever do this? You oh, go, yeah. You go, where are 5270s at? Oh, yeah. How are that doing? I always are, do that with GMTs. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 How are modern paddock perpetuals doing? Like, yeah. And I'll tell myself the story. Now there's Chrono 24. Right. right. Which is like the reverb.com or the eBay of watches. You know, so you go like, you kind of average out what the ask is. Yeah. So I'm always looking for stuff. I'm trying to think of like, what's the thing I can say I've been looking for? Now, I can't say it because then people will go and try, right. try to find it. I get it. But there are these little things. There's 100 made, and they're from the 90s. They're not super hard to get. And then I always have one thing that I get into that's not expensive and that's not hard to find. I think it's healthy. And I'm right now super into Casio G-Shocks. I know. I saw you wearing one. I, I wear them at home all the time. I think they're super fun. They're like a little chemistry set on your wrist. Yeah. Barometer, altimeter, compass, you know, I just like I just like to remind myself that this is not a stock market for me. What was that white watch you wore on the last run? That was an Audemars Piguet Concept Tourbillon GMT. No, it wasn't a GMT. Sorry, Tourbillon Chrono Self Winding Tourbillon. Self Winding. The rotor is goes around the dial. It's nutty. And the thing about APs, when you get a really complicated AP, they never get old. Yeah. There's something about them because you know you put a watch on you, it might burn you out. Yeah. GMT never burned me out. And the crazy AP concept, that watch is always cool to me because of how much technology has gone into it. It's, you said something interesting to me when I first met you. 
uh, about the new Daytona, the ceramic white face. You go, that watch is too good. It it's just too feels good. like a ghost on my hand. As soon as you put it on, you go, what now? Yeah. Have you ever, do, do you ever see one? Do you ever have one? Do you put one on? I don't yeah, yeah, it. yeah. You throw it on, you go, this is the most balanced thing in the world. It disappears. I can't read it though. That's my problem with it. I can't read it. Against the white? Yeah, or just any of the Daytonas. I could never read them. Because of the sticks? Because yeah, of the hands? Yeah, the sticks. Interesting. Yeah. I have a problem reading metal hands on a black dial. I think it's, you can't see it. Yeah. You yeah. really can't see it. Let's get into that stagecoach, though. Yeah, the stagecoach. So I discuss, it's, I'm watching No Direction Home, and I'm just blown away. Just everything in me is different. And I look at Dylan playing this slotted headstock... 12 fret yeah tiny body country guitar and he's singing is it called medgar evers blues i think that's what it's called and he's at this uh, this uh protest or something i'm looking at the guitar and he's playing he's sounding like a million dollars on it. i'm like that guitar is gorgeous so i start looking up double zero guitars yeah which are by the way the worst the fucking string slotted oh, headstock they're, they're, nightmare it's a nylon string headstock yeah and then I, then I was watching Pawn Stars a lot. And I remember someone came in with like a poker set for Pawn Stars. And the thing was Mother of Pearl out. It was, it oh, was yeah. for a stagecoach. I know that. Someone was like, yeah, this is a poker set from a stagecoach. Or like, this is like a gun case for a stagecoach. And I remember hearing the story about like rich stagecoach people going across, like steel magnates That's or amazing, something. That's amazing, right? Going across with their, their, their Mother of Pearl inlaid chess set or yeah. something. <laughs> so I took the two things, which is... You get into a double O body Martin guitar that connects with the 12th fret. Maybe this one connects to the 14th. I don't know. But there's nothing you can do on this guitar but play a song. That's it. Can't solo. Nope. Can't play up past the 9th fret, really. The neck gets too thick. The yep. strings won't budge. You can go like this. Dum, 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 did it, dip, dum, did it, dip, dum, did it, dip, dum, dum, dum. You can play Marty Robbins songs. But it brings something out in you for playing it. And that's a great guitar is it brings something out. And I'll take that guitar out, tune it up, and just play El Paso. Or oh. play some old, you know, some old country western song or Devil Woman on it. You know? Oh, Devil Woman. Yeah. Devil Woman, let go of me. Devil Woman, let me be. You play these songs that don't have any tricks. No, It's a no-frills guitar with more frills inlaid in it than you can find on any other guitar. And I love the juxtaposition of those two things. This thing is an abacus. And it's it's like, I always thought about, could I have a dental floss? You know, dental floss dispensers are just the worst. Could I get a platinum dental floss dispenser? <laughs> that you would just take out the floss when yeah. you got a new one and put it in your platinum dental floss dispenser. That's some baller. Which, But it would be like the simplest thing done the best. I love this idea. This is what we call the rig. Yeah. Anything that is simple in its system, but perfect in its execution, is to me the most beloved thing. In yeah, like life. a platinum, uh, like plunger. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When you, I, someone had a, a Porsche at my house one time, and I'm no Porsche aficionado. I'm no, I'm, a, I'm an aficionado, but I'm no expert. And it was like an '86 Targa. Yeah. And it was parked in my, and the sun was going down. It looked like a car commercial, and I went, "That's a rig." It only yeah. does one thing. Not as well as the new ones, nope. but perfectly for what it's supposed to do. Perfect. And you go, there, that's a rig. I love I how they never change the body either. No. It's like, it's like guitars. That's discipline. Pretty much there's like four, yes. four shapes. That's discipline. <laughs> I always think that's such discipline for a company not to go like, and now, I mean, you see how watch companies slowly move year after just, I mean, look at a Royal Oak. Yeah. The same watch or an Nautilus. Yeah. They're pretty much the same things. They're so disciplined. Yeah, Gerald Jenta nailed it. You know? uh, the, the Europeans are disciplined designers. Oh. Uh, I think other designers tend to go like, this time, five wheels, and this time. But to be that stoic and staid, it pays off over time. Because you look at it and you go, this is as cool as it ever was. So I like rigs. I've got a 1940 0045. Oh. Where they, I mean... It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's museum quality. Yeah. I got it. It didn't play. The frets were gone. The bridge was rising up. I, I was like, well, I, I want to play it. Thing was not cheap, you know? Yo, no. Brazilian, right? I, yeah. I yeah. Go, what do we do? Oh, God. There's one owner. The guy had passed away. He was from Aberdeen, Washington. Pictures of the guy. Oh. I mean, this, was, this is... With the green felt in the case. It, the catalogs are in the case. Oh. It was $100, oh. $185 for the Oh, guitar. man. You know? 
I go, how do I fix this thing without desecrating it? And I think to myself, send it back to Martin. Oh, yeah. Send it back to the company that made it. And I send it back to Martin. They crack the thing like a lobster. And, you know, put the neck back on the way it needed to be. I think they refresh, or they at least redressed the frets. Right. They had to take the bridge off, put the bridge back on the right way. And now the thing plays like a guitar. And sometimes I go, I wish this was my only guitar because I'd play the rest of my life on this guitar. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't like switching. Sometimes I don't like how many jackets I have. I wish I had one jacket. And well, by the end of my life, this thing was the softest thing you ever saw. When you walked in, we were talking about, as we get older, getting rid of stuff and becoming one something, one, one, one. Yeah. And also that gets into my, I'm a weird dude where I love patina, but I don't want my shit to get patina. I think it's because mostly I'm scared I got to yeah. sell it. Uh, so you and I are the same way and I'm lately trying to be like dude it's yours do yeah. what you want with it isn't that crazy though uh-huh. like I, I I look at somebody's I, even back when I bought sneakers as a kid I would clean them every day after school I took school. my Jordans home I got a, a paper bowl and I would fill it with some water and some Dove dish soap and a toothbrush and I would I, I, I remember the little tiny pores on the leather yeah not really the leather you know the synthetic material of the, of the Jordans had these little tiny pores like skin and I would go, of course, people, I'd have to take off people's footmarks because they'd see my clean shoes and stomp yeah, on them. Yeah, stomp them. But look, you stepped on my joints. That's right. Just to do it. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Fairfield. Who uh, told you to buy a brownstone in my, in my neighborhood? It, it's the Fairfield, <laughs> Connecticut equivalent of that scene. Yeah. Um, but I think it's actually harder to put digs on a thing that's already been around a while. It's easy to put digs on a new thing. Yeah. You, got, you have no, I'll tell you what. Like, if, if you get something in your hands that stayed a certain condition for 50 years, it's now in, entrusted to you. Yeah. And if you're the dummy who puts a scratch on a thing that hasn't had a scratch for 50 years, I had a 1962 see-through blonde Strat. The thing oh. was in such good condition. Like Mary Kay or something? Almost. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost Mary Kay, but with a little more blonde. Right. Gorgeous guitar. I had it on my couch, and I was doing a... I had an automatic screwdriver, like a, a power screwdriver, cordless, yeah. cordless screwdriver, to raise the pickups on a different guitar, and I threw the screwdriver. Oh. And in the middle of the air, I went, oh, I know what's on the couch. Boing. Oh, no. And when you look at that dig, you go, that's not any dig. That's a gash that happened to something that's 60 years old, and it never had that on it. And then some idiot, 40 years later, grabbed it. Yeah. And he's the guy who did that to it. Yeah. That's tough. <laughs> a brand new guitar, yeah. a brand new watch. Yeah. Have fun. Unless it's a minute repeater. Right. And it's all bezel. T- but that's why I like, I feel like service is more important than free stuff. As long as you know the guy, I feel like I have a good enough relationship. Like for instance, I'll tell you this. So I got, this is, this is where you and I are so similar. So the watch I wore all summer, I mean, it's a stupid amount of money, right? Yeah. So it's entrusted to me. Oh my God, I want to be able to, I, I, we never really own these things. They, oh, they should say, you they never really own a Patek they, Philippe. You're just holding on to it until you can sell it and get out of it and not think you're not feel like a moron. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're just trying to hold on to it because oh, I'm not trying to make more money. No. We, we're the original collectors who were like, I only care about the value so no one will think I'm an idiot if and when I sell it. That's right. That's we go, right. no, they hold value. And parachutes to me. That parachutes to, to uh, me, they're like, if I can get out. Yeah, where where I had my fun. I don't care about. Pro- I, I didn't do this for profit. I yeah. don't care about it. So, but when I'm looking at this watch and I'm going, I really want to wear this all summer. I really want to wear this all summer. Yeah. Here's how my brain works. I write the CEO of AP, Francois, and I write him. And this is me. This is quintessentially me, dear Francois. I really want to wear this uh, this Turbion concept on stage, but I I I just I. I want to know that if I bang it up, it's going to be okay. If I wear this all summer and I bang this up, can I send it back to you to just make new again, no matter what? And if you say yes, I'll wear it all summer and email back. Yes. And I went, Oh, I can wear the watch all summer. This is me. Like I'm the same way. I go, if I, if you can roll back the odometer on this watch, yep. I don't, I'll buy the watch. That happened to me once I met Bo Gore at LA Watchworks. I saw a Rolex that a guy fell off and a guy ran it over in his lawnmower. And he, this guy, I've never seen a guy restore Rolexes like this or any watches. As soon as I saw what he did, I go, I can wear anything That's for right. the rest of my life. They're, the technicians at these companies are so good. Yeah. They have laser filling now. 
Oh. They can use a laser exactly to put more metal on something, and then and then just resurface it. They'll, you don't even know. So the guys at Patek Philippe are so good at polishing. Yeah. I have seen them do it. Like they'll take a clasp like I'm wearing, which is a butterfly enclosure, yeah. and they get scratched just from looking at them. And it has the Calatrava cross indented on it, like yep. engraved on it. And it scratches the second you own it. You know what they do? Right. They take nail polish. Nail polish. They paint the whole thing with nail polish and then they start buffing the whole thing and the nail polish fills in fills in with the engraving so you don't buff the engraving out Whoa. they're so perfect with it and then they take the nail polish off so they didn't buff down into the engraving so it softens it they put a little nail polish inside of everything that's then crazy. they buff the rest of it and all it will do is take the nail polish off but not go into the engraving i've i dropped a watch one time 5971 diamond baguette bezel perpetual calendar one of my favorite pieces. I dropped it on my bathroom floor, tile floor. Now, remember, 5971 has a tang buckle. Uh, a, it does not have a deployant. Right. If you have a watch with a tang buckle on it, you will drop it one every hundred times. Oh. Right? Because you're holding your wrist against your Yeah, your, yeah, and you're trying to fasten it. You do it over a bed. Yeah. Do it over a bed. <laughs> Always do it over a bed. This thing fell, and the side of it had a gash on it, like just... <laughs> I, dr I got in a cab. Yeah. And I went, I drove to the Henry Stern Agency in Rockefeller with the, the Patek Philippe yep. uh, service center offices. I walked it in like an injured friend. Yeah, yeah. Help! I sat right. A man down. <laughs> like Vietnam. I sat in front hey, man of Larry. Down. I sat in front of Larry Petinelli, who at the time was the president. Yeah. And I go, what can we do here? He goes, let me send it down. The technicians come up, they look at it, they bring it down. Larry and I shoot the shit for an hour. And they bring it back up with all the little readouts of it. They've tested it. You look at the side of it. It was perfect. What? They went back in time. It's like, it's like a do-over. Oh. From that moment on. Yeah. Every complicated Patek slash Patek. I was thinking, I, I kind of interchanged the way I say them. Every complicated Patek Philippe I have, if it has a buckle on it, yeah. I, take, I, I, I buy an extra deployant clasp for it. So that if you put a deployant clasp on the wrong way, it just falls down your wrist. Right, right. You put a buckle on the wrong it way. It falls on the ground. It falls to the ground. Yeah. So I buy extra deployment class. Oh, I put shit. Because I couldn't take it. But when I saw how they fixed it, to your point, I went, oh, yeah. So for me, my relationship with these brands, like I don't get free watches. Yeah. But I like to get an email that says, wear it. Have fun with it. Yeah. If something happens to it, we'll put a new one on. Like they're, Especially because they're new. That's yep. the fun of a new watch. I know. Well, they have the parts, Dean. They'll throw a new part on. I keep thinking if I can get a, an AP15202, it would be the one watch for me, and I'd just wear it the rest of my life. Yep. And and I wouldn't even polish or anything. I would just look at it. Yeah. And they go, look at his 15202. That's Because I've seen some 5402s, vintage ones, uh -huh. and they just look great. You know what? One scratch looks bad, and a yeah. million looks great. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great lyric. Right. Uh, that's that's a great lyric. It's true. Wow. When something's scratched a million times, it's yeah. actually smooth again. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. That's what you're looking at. Yeah. Just never polish it and you'll be fine. It's the polishing that killed watches. I don't know anything about the Richard... Uh, how, how Richard you, Meal? Yeah, Richard Meal. Never got into it. Yeah. Um, it's a different neighborhood. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I didn't even know how to say it. See, yeah. but all of a sudden, I just started seeing them in the last yeah. two years all over uh, it's its own it's, market. Yeah. Instagram. What is that? Is it like the new... Uh, Frank Mueller? I think so. Oh, that's, a, I, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, what do I think it's like? I think it's like Lamborghini. Yeah. I, I, think, I think they are the Lamborghini of watches. You're right. You're right. And Some people are Lamborghini people yeah, and the rest are Ferrari and Porsche. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And that's a dynamic, hyper-styled, hyper-designed watch. Yeah. Which, I, which isn't... Look at it like this. If I was just starting collecting, I'd own one. Yeah. I'm so far down the line. Like like a long and sound. I don't have one because I've never had one. And at this point in my career, I don't yeah. want to work for the rest of my life to start collecting a line of watches. What are you looking to still looking for? You got stuff that you want? No. no. I, at, at this point, uh, to be honest, I'm only interested in things that are one of a kind. And, and one of a kind. Things that are made for me. Did you? And that's one a year, one every couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And that, I'm happy with that. Like, I'm hardly ever buying new stuff anymore. Let's get into the Dumble stuff real quick, and then we'll, I'll ask you some other stuff here. But I, I, I was always fascinated with Dumble. I actually thought the guy died years ago. 
Uh, that was always the thought mm-hmm. that he died years ago, but no, he's in Santa Cruz or yep. whatever right now, still with like a waiting list. Um, let's get into the the uh, the history of the Dumble. You got mm-hmm. Santana's, right? That one is one of Carlos's. Yeah, the one yeah. that I used on on this last tour, the and summer how, tour. How many Dumbles do you got? Several. My Se- answer is always just several. Several. Yeah, I actually don't even know and. It's just, it would be designed to just make people go, yeah. Um, but look at it like this. I'm the kind of guy who wants to buy three of a thing to find the best one. I'm the same way. I am the same way. And then when you get the best one. Yeah. You sell the other two. Yeah. It's that. It, it, it. But then it just so happened that selling them seemed silly because they're so in demand. And yeah, and I just went, I don't, I don't have the, I don't want to sell. I don't like selling things. Yeah. There's very, very, very few things out there that I have sold. No it's shit. Just, yeah, very few things. Wow. Very few things. But um, I knew Stevie Ray Vaughan had played one. And yep. God knows I was looking for that sound. I knew that too. So He's what made it famous. He's what made it famous. Right. Now, before Stevie, you've got Jackson Brown. You've got guys from Little Feet. You've yep. got uh, guys in Jackson Brown's band. I think Jackson Brown was probably the biggest Avon lady for Dumble. Because anyone who played in his band got one. Danny Korchmar had one. Uh, David Lindley had a, had several of them. So it's from this era of California music, yeah. Kind of post, you know, sort of early seventies, kind of Southern California Eagles kind yeah, of yeah, that troubadour, that troubadour thing. Yeah. Exactly. I was looking for it. You found it. And so that world had him, and and and, and then because Stevie Ray Vaughan recorded Texas Flood at Jackson Brown's studio, he discovered this Dumble, and. It was a Dumbleland special, big 150 watt thing, I think. And God, super loud, super loud. It'll tear your head off, but the right way. Right, right. Uh, you ever had your ears torn up the right way? Oh yeah, these speakers right here in my oh. house. You put them on, you're just like, this is insane. There is a way to go deaf in style. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's just, <laughs> I, I heard ACDC play the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, and. I've never heard something that loud that There's good. There's nothing better than when that. When I heard Angus Young's guitars, yeah. I, was, I said two things. I'm going deaf, and this is the greatest thing I ever heard. Yeah. It, was the right, it was the right kind of loud. So I'm making my second record, and somebody brings a dumble around, some rental place. Oh, I got to try the dumble. I got to try it. We got one. We got one. We got yeah. one. We got one. I tried it out. I don't remember how I felt about it. And then I found a guy who had an overdrive special from the early 90s, and I bought it. In L.A.? Uh, no, this guy was from Kansas. Right. He was a dealer, and I bought one. And, and oh, wow. I, and I used one on Chuck Berry's giant showman cab on my second record. And I kept renting it because they needed to keep it in case Chuck Berry came. That's Chuck Berry's. If he, when he comes through in, in gigs, we need to have it for him. So I just kept renting this showman cab. That's I don't amazing. Know, six t- tens in there or something? Six I tens. don't know. It was like a big, giant cab. Yeah. And I remember the sound of that amp. And I think I liked it more for being a Dumble than for being a great amp. But it did kind of what I wanted it to do. And then I would kind of like want to buy a backup because I'm a backup guy. I am too. Everything needs a backup. I'm so weird. Found yeah. the ultimate boot. Now I need a second pair. Yeah. This is the old, look, that closet right there, the ultimate leather jacket. I need the second one. We're exactly. like, I it's, just bought another jacket today of one I realized I like. It's nuts though. It's, what it's is a, that? It's a, it's a well-maintained sickness. It, it really is. It's, and the possession is not... The jacket. The possession is knowing you filled the hole in your head that said it. Totally. It's it's about um, reconciling shapes. Oh. It, as soon as you realize you had one that's good, well, when that's good, when that's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So to have a backup. Well, you and I have also this. To know there's another one means you won't be destroying it if you destroy this one. It's I, it's a I'm weird. The same way. I have it. And also this too, like. Well, they're gonna go out of business or stop making this, so I might as well just get it. I now. have that with t-shirts. Oh. I know they keep changing t-shirts. Oh, and when you find t-shirts that work for you, buy them all. Oh, because that will be your t-shirt for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yep, I'm a big t-shirt guy. Big so, on laundry. Big on textiles. Oh. natural dye t-shirts. I wash them myself because I know each time you wash and hang dry them, yeah. they look different. Yep, some of the color comes out. It's yeah. more faded. This shirt. Was, did not always look this way and it's the washes that just keeps taking the color out yeah i'm, I'm the same way like this t-shirt here from japan they're yep. short so it's not super long yep i don't look and short how, and it. how many do you have of them and i got eight of them over there you there. go and 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 i'll get more that's perfect yeah. and by, by the time you get more yeah 
the tag number will be different. And they'll I, say, we went longer in this. We used a different continent. Oh, God. I talk to my buddy about it all the time. I'm like, I got to get them all now because they're going to change this. What do you think it is? It's fucking a sickness, John. It's a sickness. We're sick. Sick. I should be wearing this the whole time like Malcolm Young. Yeah, until yeah, it's yeah. Until it's just Wearing disintegrated. It oh, and people go, God, he's been wearing that T-shirt for 15 years. This is a control issue. Yeah. It must be. I think so. It's a control issue. Yeah. I have it too then. Yeah. I don't know. We're just nuts. Got to have a backup. Got to have a gotta backup. Got to have a backup. Meaning the one you now wear is a freebie. Yep. It's almost like a video game where you get a free life. Yeah. You want to know. Extra ship. Yes. That the, you that got an the, extra sh- ship. That the ship you're playing yeah. is not going to end the game. Yeah. You've got another little ship down at the bottom right. And that feeling of security is what's always made me want to go out into the world. I love this is the there. last one like it. Better save every moment of it. I go, uh, by the way, I'll never wear it enough to break it down. I know. Exactly. Same with me. I know. All my shit is mint. So now I'm like, let it be mint or wear it into the ground. But what I won't do anymore is yeah. wear a watch for a week and put two scratches on it or wear boots for two days. And put dirt on it. Yeah. If you're gonna break them out from their kind of, if you're gonna deflower them, yeah. Wear them till they break down. No shit. Don't so you have, just ride it till the wheels fall. Off. Don't have 16 boots that you've worn once. Once. Yeah. No patina. There's no patina, no and they look. suck for a while while you're beating them up. But yeah. then once you have them, there's nothing like them. I'm about to get a pair resold. Yeah. With the Danite sole that I showed you. Oh, I love it. I'm about to actually get to know my cobbler. So you got. Um, you got the second Dumble, and then when do you start chasing and realize, I've got the great Dumble? Is that the Santana one? No, that's the Steel String Singer. No shit, because that's a weird one. They didn't even make that many They've, of them. Ra- if you want to talk about the rarest thing right. in, that I've ever come across, it's the Steel String Singer. What'd yeah. they make, like five, five of those? Yeah. Five, maybe. That's crazy. Yeah. So, and I had number five. How long were you chasing that? Forever, because that's what Stevie had. Right. All I wanted was a steel string singer. And I finally found one, and I had it delivered to me when I was making, it came in a Jackson Brown road case when I was making Continuum. This would have been 2005 or 2000, really early 2006. And I took it out and we started playing it. And someone had sent me this Japanese Stevie Ray Vaughan Bible. And in there, is a photograph of that amp and it said this is the amp that Steve Ray Vaughan played Texas Flood through and I flipped out. No way. I went look at every little scratch on this amp. That's it? Renee this is the amp. Renee Martinez who was Stevie's right. tech. Renee this is the amp. This is the amp. This is the amp. He went that's it buddy. That's the amp you know. And he, he wasn't saying it like he remembered seeing it but he went yeah that's the, that's the amp in that photo. That's, that's insane. That amp. And we thought the Japanese were never wrong about this stuff. Right. I thought I had it. I couldn't sleep. Right. And then I called Jackson Brown's gear guy Will you run this? Will you check this with this with the serial number? Will you will you see if the, was this really? And he goes, no, nope, that wasn't it. The, uh, Stevie's was a Dumbland special, blah 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 blah. And I, that wasn't it. But that's the amp I took around for ever. Right. I took that amp around, and that's the one it's still on stage. Yeah. And then I found another one a couple years ago, and that's the backup. Oh and then shit. That one sounds cool. It was Henry Kaiser's. It was the one in the blue. If you ever saw the oh, blue yeah. suede steel yeah, string singer, yeah. that's the one I yeah. own. And that was Henry Kaiser's. It was originally in a big combo. And then he had it taken out and put in a different. So the speaker for that combo, for that head, is the former combo. So it's missing the top. The top is blacked out. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's got a panel in the front, which is a weird little part of history. The, and, the uh, tone is insane. These things are so. Uh, okay, so the thing about a Dumble, and I don't know that many people outside of guitar players will know this or understand this is that they're really fast. Their response time is so fast and unwavering and they don't sag. Sag is like this thing in an amp where you hit a note and it kind of takes a second. It goes through the tubes, kind of has this natural compression. The transformer has to figure out what to do with it. Right. And then, and that's what people like about a lot of things because you, you, it kind of is apologetic to your playing. You I play love an old, Tweed Deluxe. Yeah, exactly. It's like crazy. It, it's kind of a compressor. Yeah. You can play and it goes whoosh, yep. whoosh, 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 and it's really fun. Dumbles go, ha! Yep, yep, Whoa. yep, 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 yep. So you start doing that Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, and you realize, oh, he liked this stuff because it was so fast. And it's like right there, and it doesn't, you can't move it. 
it's immovable and it's lightning fast. And I love that. I love an amp that doesn't back down. It, it just stays there. It's, and so that's the steel string singer thing to me. And I also have this other one. It's this, another Dumbledore that's the fastest sounding amp I've ever heard. You just play it and it's like you heard it before it's done. Making wow. It. What are the tubes on those? Are they always the same? No, and I'm not a tube guy outside right. of a 12AX7. Right. Another thing I collected before it got nuts. Tubes. I have more 12AX7s. Vacuum tubes from uh, Germany. Every brand. Oh, Muller. Phillips. Yeah. Phillips. Muller. Yeah. Philco made a good one. A lot oh. of these were made by the same manufacturer, but right. you get a Telefunken and then it's an RCA 12AX7, which is my favorite. And I used to buy these things on eBay for 10 bucks a pop. Oh, I'd get them all day long. Well, now they're like, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks. And if you get a Telefunken, it's 150 bucks for one of those. Mullards, Fishers, Amperex, uh, what was the Amperex Bugle Boys, you know? And, and you get an amp and you go, oh, I like it, but I don't love it. And you take out your best RCA. You take out the first, and you go, oh, it's a Ruby tube or whatever. Yeah, Ruby tube. Right? <laughs> and you put in an RCA and the thing comes to life. Oh, you kill me. Right? Ah, oh, this fucking ruby tube. Every tube made yeah, today is... Yeah, king of the shrill. No, they're horrible. Yeah. They'll, they'll blow out in a number of hours. The tubes from the 50s and 60s, and from, some of them are probably from the 40s, these were made to be military spec. Oh, so yeah. They were oh. rated to 100,000 hours. That shit is, like, insane. They never die. They never blow out. So you get, you get a RCA 12AX7 that you like, you can have it the rest of your life. You get groove tubes put in a new amp, Sov techs, they're gone. Yeah. They're gone. I'm no nah, the, the amps are funny, man. I feel bad for people who don't have techs. Oh amps my God. are a pain in the ass. You put How? you put an amp away and take it out a week later, the reverb's gone. What happened to the reverb? I don't know, reverb's just gone. Oh, it's fucking crazy, right? You see how dumb an Accusonics or Accutronics reverb tray ever taken a reverb tray out of a amplifier and opened it up and looked at it's it it's just two springs across it it's, it's the world's worst made design ever it's hilarious it's like screaming down on those tubes with kids it, it looks like some guy made it in his garage they're holding on by the smallest gauge wire into these little holes and they're soldered together and if you knock and by the way you see where it's situated at the bottom of an amplifier yeah. where the ground hits it yeah it's the, it's done and I mean, we, we carry drawers full of Accus accutronics reverb trays because they're gone in days i feel bad for people who have to up upgrade update uh upkeep how close was the two rock to it uh good question it had everything but the chestiness right and i think that comes from the transformers i think dumble just had these giant transformers oh yeah those are stupid right? giant yeah giant yeah. transformers the two rock i really liked the custom reverb and i really liked the signature amp that i made with them was really really i still use it I still yeah use it i saw on, that yeah i still use it up on a, and you know they just got goofy with me that's all they, they like i don't you know it's hard like i don't like telling i don't it's, it wouldn't be telling tales out of school but yeah. i don't like stories about shit that went south but shit goes south yeah yeah and you know it's whenever someone sees me as fast cash oh the worst if you see me as fast cash yeah i will i will my stuff will be gone the next morning yeah if you see it as a long-term thing where yeah that's cool we sold out 25 of them really cool let's do another thing down the line it's it was it's it's hard if you it's hard to see me come through and go let's make 25 and see how quickly they sell and not want to make more than 25. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah, you're, yeah. if you have the keys to the machine. Oh yeah, you're going to fire it back up. <sighs> the discipline involved in yeah. not firing the machine back the up. The greed comes in, man. So Instead of something than, cool, yeah. it becomes, you know. There's more than 25 out there. I was always a matchless guy, Mark Sampson. Love Mark Sampson. The, oh, come then on, Then he worked dude. for Bad Cat, Yeah, right? Bad Cat. And Mark Sampson said something to me I'll never forget. Mark Sampson... Is he alive still? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I haven't good. seen him in like years. We but... play a game called Is or Was yeah. based, on, based on Wikipedia. What did it say? Is or Was? <laughs> yeah, you ever but... look someone up on Wikipedia just to see Is or Was? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I do that all the time. Oh, I just... I'm like, that guy's gone, Are we right? Is or Was? And it'll tell you right in the first sentence. Yeah. Dean Del Rey is. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Sampson. What a genius. Matchless. I mean... I said to him one time, he came in the studio... I said, I don't think I could ever really understand an amplifier. I don't understand them. I got all the books. I don't get it. He said, if you were on a desert island and all the pieces to build an amp oh, to build a radio to get you off the desert island were there on the island, you'd build a radio. Yeah, that's I true. Went, I went, that's genius. Yeah. 
That's genius. If you needed to build a radio with, and you had all the parts, you'd figure it out. And then I went, oh, I guess I just don't want to. I think my favorite thing about you is when I'm uh, following you on uh, Instagram and then you whip something up and I go, oh, I love the same shit. Uh, one was the Louis Vuitton, Kim Jones, you know, the Eclipse like all the luggage. oh, I got all the monogram eclipse stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kim Jones to me was Louis Vuitton to me. I thought he was. That's a golden era. That era is incredible. That's a golden era. I also the last thing he ever designed. Yeah, I have a couple of. So the collector part of me, you're not collecting unless you're doing what other people think is absolutely insane. Yeah, right. Like it's taking chances. It's yep. gam it's getting things when no one else cared. Right. Right. They made a run of titanium briefcase uh, suitcases. Oh yeah. The Biston, which is like their oh, their 55 like a Rowena. 50 55. No, it's oh. um hard sided, very square. Oh, hard -sided. Those those suitcases. Oh yeah, yeah. The ones that they stack up in movies where oh, you're I like, love oh, those. like you know. And they're they're really more for ships and stuff. Yeah, right, right. But they're very uncompromising. Like the old trunks and yeah. all that they, yeah, yeah. A very uncompromising, yeah. square, heavy, you know. Yeah. But they made a version in titanium. And I had ordered a backpack they made. It's a steel frame camping backpack oh, shit. with a titanium uh, suitcase on the back. And I ordered it. it. Two years, it finally comes in. They go, so you lucked out because the titanium was too hard to source. We had to basically cut the production in half. It took forever to figure out. Wow. No one made any money. Yeah. And we have to just kind of satisfy the orders that came through. So here you go. The thing was so heavy, I had to give it back. I went, oh. this is so heavy, I'll never use it. And ah. it was super expensive. So then I'm like, will you keep your eyes open for any of the actual suitcases? They were all sold out. And I managed to get two from people who had just sort of given up and didn't want them anymore because it took so long to Oh, yeah, to yeah, their name comes. You go like, like, I don't want this titanium suitcase yeah, that anymore. That was last year. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. There's yep. a lot of stuff you can get when of people are over course. it and they don't pay till the end. Yeah. And... I had to get one, and then I had to get another one. Oh, yeah, you're back up. I had to get another, because I know that these will be valuable someday. It yeah. is a titanium yeah. monogram, laser etched thing, and, and what we're talking about, putting damage on it, it won't look good till it's banged up. It oh. will not look good until it's destroyed. I keep thinking we gotta do two podcasts because we need a backup. We need a <laughs> I think you almost have two bags. I know, two yeah, podcasts. I know. Yeah, so, that, so like, if I'm not continually buying things to collect that make other people go, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I'm not collecting the right way. Yeah, yeah. Because if you buy a 5711 Nautilus, yeah. how big a chance are you taking? That's, the, that's dumb. Yeah. I mean, good I for you. I need that watch, though. You I got know, one? But good, yeah, I have one. You got one? Yeah, I have one. Oh, I love how you, uh, you look down and you're like, yeah, I got one. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. When you, when you asked me to do the podcast, I had just been thinking to myself about how very little long form expression there is anymore. Yeah. And that years are going by and people don't know what I think about things. And I'm confusing, well, I think we all confuse getting into trouble, the fear of getting into trouble with the right to express how you feel or how you see the world. And we're not finding out how we see the world. We used to read interviews with people and go, what a fucking interesting guy. Yeah. Even if he was in a screw up. You oh. read quotes. We used to live in a world of great, interesting quotes. You know. Um, yeah, James Dean. Yeah, Niall, yeah. Niall Gallagher, right? Yeah. Who, the, Liam Gallagher. Yeah, Liam Gallagher, yeah. man. It, it, yeah. All that stuff. I, I mean, I wanted to talk. I'm so, I can't thank you enough because I had Paul Stanley on. And that was my whole gateway into music. Was it really? Yeah, a kiss when I was a kid. That yeah. was it, you know. I got rock and roll over, and it was like Whoa. I had that cover, and my mom bought it for me, at a, or maybe I picked it out because I liked the cover at a, at a garage sale. Yeah, and I just stared at the cover. Same. I know, I'll see a rug sometimes, and it'll look like rock and roll over. I'll see an oriental rug or something, and go like, that looks like rock and roll over. Yeah. Anytime you see a pattern like that with the four things, sort of like a wheel. But now, as in my later part of my life now, uh, I can't even tell you. All I do is comedy and podcasts. Mm -hmm. All I do is that. But every once in a while, I go, Dad and Co is playing. I'm going to go out. I'm going to see John and those guys play. I'm, it's going to take me away like mm -hmm. music used to take me away and do another fucking place. And I just feel good. And I also love that you're so into the stuff I'm into that I'm like, that guy gets it. 
There are people out there who get it, and no one person is patient zero for this stuff. Yeah, everyone gets it from someone else. Yeah, you know, a lot of what I'm into, Clapton's into, you know, but he kind of turned me on to it. Right, you know, he either either just seeing him interact with it or him saying this is the best thing you can get i go i gotta get it and but but eric got all that from you know a lot of it came from hiroshi fujiwara right right and hiroshi fujiwara got it from someone else yeah there's no patient zero for a true kind of character it's all picked up from other people you admire you yeah. know oh yeah so for me i know that you know eric was the first guy i ever saw drive a porsche gt2 yeah you know he said, this is the car of the world. Oh, that and car is insane. The car of the world. So, you know, the first time I ever visited with Clapton, it was in London for a week or so. And I came home and I bought a 911 Turbo S. I bought the car from his living room. I called Manhattan Motor Cars. Yeah. Hey, do you have a 911 Turbo? He's like, we have a Turbo S. I go, is that any good? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, because it sounded like it could have been the lower end one. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it sound like a Turbo S? Like, well, I got the S. Yeah. It just doesn't have as much speed. To me, as the S always is to me. Well, in cars, I guess it is. Yeah, right? right, right. Well, we have the Turbo S. Is that his? He's like, that's better. I go, I'll take it. Yeah. You know, because we look up to people in a certain way in yeah. which they interact with this. I want to interact with this, you know? Well, so we're all I, copying somebody. I, what I like about there's a group of people, when I look at you, I don't go, fuck this guy and his watch and his, his collection. Yeah, I yeah. never understood. And I still don't to this day understand people that shit on other people because they buy expensive things or stuff they like. So here's the thing. The, the audience that I have for music does overlap with the audience that understands watch collecting, but not by enough to ever post anything on my site about it. Right. What I have is Hodinkee. Oh, yeah. So I'll post from the Hodinkee page. And the idea is... I remember like walking into Woolworths when I was a kid and on the way in being worried that like somebody would see me walking into Woolworths. But then I realized as like poor. Yeah. Right. But then I realized once you're in Woolworths, everyone there is in Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> same, same with me growing up. It was Kmart. Right. Yeah. As soon yeah. as you get into Kmart, yeah. everyone in Kmart's cool with you being at Kmart. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel the same way about, uh, being at, being in Hodinkee. It's like, if you decided to come to this watch website yeah. to watch a video of me talking about watches, yep. then you have obviously opted in to hearing about a person who collects several watches. At, yeah. uh, you know. So it's a very fine line. It's not something that I kind of push in any other place than kind of, um, you know, segmented kind of little channels of people who are passionate about something. And I also don't talk about the money of something like I do in my personal life. I'm sort of into like paid this, now it's that. But that's gross. Yep. And I've never and never will photograph more than two watches together at a time. When right. I see a photograph oh. of 11 or 12 watches on a steering wheel, oh. that to me is yeah. disgusting. Well, that's just dumb. That's disgusting. That's dumb. If you own multiples of something, fantastic. God yeah. bless you. But why would you ever take a picture of 12 watches on a steering wheel. Yeah. Or, or you put a watch on a Dom Perignon bottle. Oh, see you later. You are undoing the work yeah. that I'm trying to do. Of making it just to, cool. To, to separate watch ownership from Buffoons. luxury lifestyle. Right, right. Right. They're opening, complicated. Open a champagne bottle with no, your with, watch? With, with, no. Oh. These are complicated watches. Yeah. And... These complicated uh, uh, movements cost a lot of money because they take months to make with precious materials. It's not necessarily the same thing as a leather bag. No. It's just different. Yep. And I don't think in my life they pair together. You know what pairs together really well in my life is a hoodie and a perpetual calendar. Well, I always said the ultimate is a dirt bag with a crushing watch. Yes. Yes. Like if you, uh, to me, that is the look. Yeah. T-shirt, jeans, some beat up boots and a dope watch. And that's what your watch is in a watch. Yeah. The strap is rubber. Yeah. So that's the jeans. Yeah. The material is steel. Yeah. That's the t-shirt. 
Yep. And the movement inside, which is a complication, it's a world time monthly calendar. That's the watch. Yeah. And same thing with me. I'm wearing an Aquanaut. It's rubber. You bang it around. This isn't even a complication. Uh, but yeah. it's complicated in the sense that it's green and it doesn't exist anywhere else. You know? I love that watch. But I don't, I don't, uh, I'm, and, and I think I've been successful in recontextualizing timepieces in this, taking it away from Lamborghini, Dom Perignon, private jet. It's not about that. Nope. It never was nope. about that. And, and I see now, I think the greatest test of whatever influence I have uh, in terms of me writing stuff for Hodinkee and doing talking watches and stuff is that Silicon Valley, always known for this sort of super dialed down right. approach to things, will still take mass transit, Yep, have a Tesla, three hoodies, four Oxfords, and they'll have a Patek Philippe now. Yeah, they will. Because it's not a part of life, of, of luxury lifestyle. Right. It is a luxury item, but if you're coming at it the right way, it's more complex than it is rich bitch. It's, We're it's into the more complexity. about handmade oh. and, 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 and man hours it's, and knowledge. When you really go to the AP factory yeah. and you see that a technician is working on a minute repeater perpetual calendar chronograph Royal Oak, which if you've ever seen one is phenomenal. Yeah. And that he's been working on it for the last three months and he's got another three months to go. Insane. One guy Insane. comes into the factory. I met the guy. Yeah. Comes into the factory, sits on that little stool, puts the loop on and keeps working on one watch. One watch. For six months. Fucking without going crazy. Do you know why the watch is $600,000 now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I, I love to have people on my show, uh, handmade people. Because mm -hmm. when they go $1,000 boots, I bought these Doc Martens for 100 It's like, yeah, they're in China. This guy over here made these boots that's by right. hand. And he learned to craft. And, he's, and, and they fit your foot. And That's right. And that is why yeah. if you own a complicated watch, it is your responsibility to learn everything about it. Yeah. Or else parts of it go to waste. Yep. And I get a 5270, which is to me the centerpiece of watch collecting. Forget that it's brand new. It's Paddock's centerpiece, perpetual calendar chronograph. It is it. Forget about vintage. It's it. Yeah. If I don't understand the movement and what's gone into that movement. Yep. When they went and stopped the Lamania base plate movement and started making their own movements in-house, I'm not getting my money's worth and I'm not doing them the honor of understanding what they've made if I don't know everything about the way the cam drops down, the second-hand cam drops down and it works off the same, the, the chronograph hand, the second hand drops down into the cam of the movement and now drives off of the same uh, spring as the second hand in the lower subdial. So you can run a chronograph hand all day and it doesn't fatigue the watch because it That's drops crazy. down and becomes a part of the second hand. Or that paddock completely redesigned the shape of their gears because triangular teeth were wearing one another out. Wow. And they drew a new shape of gear that makes very little contact with one another and it won't wear out. That's the stuff I want to know about. I so that when that I wear stuff. it, it all. You ever see that movie, The Powers Powers of Ten? That no. '70s movie called Powers of Ten. No, what's that? It's where uh, it's real '70s science film strip, but it's very cool. It starts out with a person, with two people laying on a uh, laying on a picnic uh, blanket in Chicago by the water, and it it zooms out and it zooms out at an exponent of ten every second, every ten seconds, until you're outside of the galaxy, until you're outside of that universe, until you're outside of that universe. Whoa. It's you got to watch Powers yeah, of Ten. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes back in. And then it goes through the people and does the exact opposite and goes down into their cells and atoms. It's super trippy. I got to see that. But it's like Powers of Ten where once you learn about the, about the vertical chronograph, how the cam works, then you can zoom out and look at the whole watch when you're sitting on the toilet. <laughs> you know, you, you know, when you're sitting down taking a dump yeah, and you look yeah, at your yeah. watch. Look at that thing. And you go, look at that thing. And oh. you're sort of transposing the weird, uh, one of a kind joy of pooping yeah. with the materialism of looking at your watch. <laughs> and you just sit there and look at your watch dial and you watch seconds go by and you go, those are seconds, huh? Boom, boom, boom. Wow, you realize you're done? You've been sitting there for four yeah. minutes? Yeah, yeah. Wow, boom.
<laughs> mm. Mm. Those are seconds, huh? If you know every little piece or, or as close as you can come, it makes every time you look at your watch go like, oh yeah. Thanks you know? for doing the show. Dude. It's my pleasure, man. I knew we, I knew we had to talk. Oh, uh, it's, it's it's great, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to uh, hanging with you some more. Yeah, I'll see you at this. I'll see you at the store. Yeah, and also I'll be at the San Francisco shows. Brilliant. Yeah, oh, great. Because I'm be doing comedy show. at the Palace of Fine Arts two nights before. Oh, great. So I'm just going to stay and I'm going to go uh, 30, 31. They're going to be great shows. Yeah. Can't so, wait for my first day of school. I'm shipping uh, out tomorrow. Uh, uh, yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You leave Wednesday. All yeah. right. So um, thank you for doing the show. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Me too, man. And, Fast friends. Awesome. And anything you want to uh, say before we go? What do you got? Oh, I'm going away. Yeah? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear next year. You know, in terms of my stuff, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let a rotation of the earth go around and um, see what's up. But I'll I'll still be making music. But I'd like to. Uh, I need to stay home for the travel. Has I've traveled a lot this year. Yeah, you did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit on the bench in the dugout for a year. Yeah, just chill. I can never just chill. Right. But I'd like to regroup my efforts. I think we started to go in music with these sort of single serve efforts yeah make a song release a song oh, make yeah. a song release a song. and i'd like to go back to the patience involved in making a song banking a song making a song banking a song right and then putting a record out I, I i'm not sure that the song at a time strategy is doing anyone any favors i just don't yeah i, I don't believe you know? that either everything's getting so particleized i'm just gonna wait until just wait till the rules change in your favor and then put a record out anyway people have heard enough about me i can take yeah. a break Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you so much for doing the show. Thank you. And uh, I, I can't tell you how much uh, you're playing. Everything blows me away. I'm trying. Has inspired me, and uh, and I love talking to you today. You too, man. You're great, great. You too. Thank Thanks you. everybody for tuning in, and make sure you go see Dead and Co. or check out any of John's records. There, uh, you know where they're at. Out there streaming. And thank you so much for uh, uh, you know being here. See you guys. <laughs>